this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. I'm back from my holiday, so I'm back with videos probably about three a week, not one every day. I don't think I'll do that so soon again. But today I would like to show you how to make a small paper lantern that you can actually send in the post because this is a finished size and you can easily pop that into an envelope. What you need for this is you need either a, a um, 12 by 12 sheet, which you cut into three uh, strips, four inches by 11 and three quarters, um, which you then score at two and seven eighths, five and three quarters, eight and five eighths and 11 and a half. Yeah, I'll leave that here without my fingers on it. Or you can cut from an A4 sheet, you can cut two of these strips, four inches by 11 and three quarters, and then score them in the same places. What you need, you need to cut them sideways. Well, it depends if you've got a directional pattern or not. Mine uh, was a directional pattern, so I cut three strips from the 12 by 12 sheet. And I scored this accordingly. So just a little tip for the scoring. If you do multiple scoring, I like to, when I've got my scoreboard, I like to put little strips of washi tape on the measurements where I need to score. That helps me. I don't have to check this with every measurement then my brain just knows it's where I've marked the red bits. So I find that very useful. Otherwise I have to check on my notes all the time especially because I'm a centimeter girl I'm not really an inches girl I'm just learning this the hard way um, and yeah so you you score these and then you burnish them properly with your bone folder make sure they are properly burnished otherwise you will be struggling to fold it properly afterwards so you end up with four panels and a little flap so like this and the flap because it is a flap you just snip two corners off there and there and then you can also adhere some uh, red tape here because you'll be needing that later but you can leave that till later so what I've done with this one because I'm also a bit lazy I have chosen two dies that are similar in size because I didn't want to put this through the die cutting machine four times to cut four windows so I just picked these two and so I cut these out and then put it through again and cut these out. If you have got dies that are the same size I happen to have these two oval dies which are almost the same because they come from different sets then you can actually cut um, these at the same time by basically folding it over like this and then cutting through to um, through both layers but little tip um, I've got some marks here from my bottom plate in the die cutting machine so you want to put a piece of paper underneath so you don't have any marks I'm not too bothered because it's quite a busy paper so you can hardly see it but ideally you have something uh, underneath so, and um, yeah, to fill the windows, I have chosen uh, some vellum. This is a very thick vellum. Obviously, you can choose some thinner one. Um, I have then dry embossed this. Um, I've chosen different embossing folders. I've prepared one here that I'll show you in a moment, um, which has got these candy canes. I never really knew what to use this for, but I think this is perfect here for these windows. Again, um, with this, it's easy. I just cut a big panel and then cut that to size. But again, if you've got a directional pattern like this one, which has got the baubles, this go upwards, I cut these first and then put them in individually. So I did have, put, have to put that um, through four times. Again, this is my snowflake folder. That's easy. It doesn't matter whether it's this way or that way. So you could easily um, dry emboss two panels at the same time. If you don't want to use um, dry embossed vellum, 
Another option is to use um, vellum that you've stained yourself with some alcohol markers. I'm going to link below to the video where I've done this and show you how it's done. Also, you can use um, just plain vellum or plain coloured vellum. And the other idea um, is to use um, laminated, matte laminated um, napkins. Again, I'm going to link to a video where I'm showing you how to do this. And then you can cut this apart and use that for a window. I would not use this with some busy paper. I would use some plain cardstock for this. With this one, it's up to you. But again, if your um, colours are a bit busy, I would use a plain cardstock for the back. So what's then left to do after you've dry embossed these pieces, you can see this here, all you need to do is just glue them down. I used my Kalal glue. The, I've cut mine quite wide. You actually only need to cut them to this size, just a bit bigger than the window, but it doesn't really matter. I made sure they wouldn't touch the top there because I think once the lantern is finished, it's actually quite nice to have a bit of cardstock there on the top. So, and all you then need to do is just remove the adhesive. Mine comes in two pieces because mine was a bit short. And to make sure you can actually fold it up properly, what you do is you fold this over. Ooh, let me just get a tool here just to hold this down for a second. And then you just fold this over like this. And press it down. Little tip, oh, see I've just taken this off there, just got caught here. What you want to do with the vellum when you stick these down, yeah, make sure you all have them either debossed or embossed. Don't swap these round because um, that would look a bit awkward. And also make sure these are glued down properly and you press them down. And as you can see, mine are just coming off. I don't know why. Maybe the collar glue didn't work that well with the um, with the vellum. I'll have to research that why it's coming off. Although I have been struggling with the collar, maybe mine's a bit on the go. So I'm going to investigate this. I'm going to put a note in the description box. Um, how I found out what the problem is with this. I have to remedy this because I want to make quite a few of these um, for my village hall Christmas fate. So, and then when it's finished, it's like this. And as I said, you can send this in the post and um, this folds flat. It's almost a six by four, so it goes into a normal envelope. And I just want to show you with my torch what it would look like when the light shines through. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, it doesn't come up too nicely. That's actually quite nice, the um, embossed pattern that you've got here. So people, the recipient can just put in either a little glass with a proper candle inside or just, um, you know, these artificial little candles that you can get um, with the with the battery, battery operated. Yeah, just a little idea for something that you can make quickly and uh, it's quite effective. And you can mass produce this very easily as well. So as I said, I'm going to investigate the story with the glue, why that is a problem. It might really be the vellum and it might be better to use the double sided red tape. I'll find out in a moment. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon for the next video. OK, I've investigated my glue issue and turned down it only came out, um, came off in two spots. And I think it's because um, I only had my glue bottle about this full, just at the bottom, sorry. And uh, so I filled it up to the top and I think the glue that was left in the bottle was probably a bit dry or whatever. So um, yeah, I think in general, um, the Kalal glue works nice with the vellum, it should be okay. Just make sure when you've adhered it properly that you actually press all the frames down and then you should be okay. If in doubt, as I said, just use the red tape, but I didn't want to waste it all. And obviously it just takes so much longer to put all the strips around than just adhering it like this. So it's not the collar glue in general, it's just making sure you keep your bottle topped up 
so you've always got the freshest glue in there and the most fluid. Okay, thank you very much for watching. i see you soon. And it's me again. Um, two more things I forgot to mention. So one is I mentioned the scoreboard where I mark um, my uh, measurements. I'm doing the same for my guillotine. This is just my small one. So for the vellum, I marked basically how I cut these. And again, that makes it so much easier to cut my panels to size. And the other thing is, if you have got the oval um, frame here, the best thing to adhere the vellum is to put glue around the edges here and then just put some glue on the um, round bit as well. So you make sure the panels adhered on the frame there but also all the way around and that just makes it so much easier just press it down and I just use one of my acrylic blocks to press it down and keep it down until it's properly dried okay I hope this helped you I always like little tips that make our crafting life easier so I hope that's helped you